Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Atia and today we're going to do my February wrap up. All the books that I read during the month of February. It is a whopping 27. Yeah, before we get into that, I'm going to give you some stats and then we'll get started. Alright, so during the month of February, I read five fantasy book books, what am I doing? Uh, seven sci-fi, ten contemporary, three romance, two mystery thriller. Um, that makes for a total of 27. In terms of my star ratings, I gave one book three stars, three book three and a half stars, 15 books four stars, six books four and a half stars, and two books five stars. The category breakdown is eight adult, 18 young adult, one middle grade. 16 of those books were novels. One was a short story collection or an essay anthology. Two were graphic novels. Seven were comic book collections um, or volumes and one was a manga. And my total pages, total pages was 8,183. February was a good month in terms of like how much I read. If we're going to compare it to January, I had more five-star books in January. I think I had like five five-star books in January, and this month I only had two, but that's okay. I had a lot of six, um, I had a lot of four and a half books, or I had six four and a half books, but yeah, this is, it's a, it's a big one. So grab a snack, get a drink of water, pause the video, go use the bathroom now, and then come back and unpause it, and we're just going to get into it. First book I finished during the month of February was Geekerella by Ashley Poston. This is a contemporary retelling of Cinderella that deals with fandoms. So you follow these two characters, you follow Daniela or Elle, and then she lives with her stepmother and two stepsisters. She's part of this fandom for this show called Starfield. And then the other character you follow is Darian Freeman, and he is an actor. He's playing the lead role in the new upcoming movie of Starfield. It is Starfield, right? Yeah, Starfield. Um, and it's just their journey. They start to have this re like relationship via text because, yeah. Um, and then just like the, this, the Cinderella story with an interesting twist. I gave this book a three and a half stars. It was good. It was a good retelling. My main gripe with the book was the main girl character. It was Elle. I just found her to be very like, oh I'm not like other girls and I'm just so much better than those dumb girls that like him because he was on this show and I just, I couldn't get with it. I just couldn't get with it. I just, I spent a good majority of the book disliking one of the main characters um to the point where I didn't know if I was gonna finish it to be quite honest like she was just just very like just annoying she was very annoying and not in a likable type of way just straight up annoying she gets a little bit better because one of her friends checks her and it's like meh uh this author has another book coming out in this world called Princess and the Fangirl or something like that it's coming out in a couple months but it is a retelling of Prince and the Pauper, Pauper and the Prince, whatever that thing is to like called. And I'm interested in reading that over. I like the writing. I like the way the retelling was handled. I just didn't like the, one of the main characters in this book. Next book I finished was Black Enough, edited by E.B. Zaboy. This is a collection of short stories written by a bunch of amazing black authors about being young and black in America. I gave this... I gave this an overall four stars. I might go back and like rate each story, but that seems really excessive. So I gave an overall four sto four stars. There's a lot of diversity even within the black identity, which is obvious, duh, and I like that it covered a lot of that. Some of the authors I know before I read this that are in this are Justina Ireland, Danielle Clayton, Jason Reddles, Nick Stones, Renee Watson, Brandy Colbert. Um, Jason Coles and of course Evie Zabor herself as well as other ones. This is just this beautiful beautiful cover um, and I definitely plan on rereading this in the future. Next up we have Dear Martin by Nick Stone. This is a little, a little baby book but it's so impactful. You follow Justice. He goes to this um, private school and he's one of the few black kids there and in the beginning of the book he is 
wrongly arrested for something and he's essentially profiled while trying to help his ex-girlfriend and he's wrongly arrested and this book chronicles him writing letters to Dr. Martin Luther King as a way of just coping and thinking through his thoughts and just saying like what would Malcolm do um, and just his journey dealing with who is he going to become in the face of these adversities is the best way I can put this. I give this a four and a half star. This is a powerful book. This is a powerful book. Um, I'm glad that I picked it up when I did and yeah I look forward to reading more by Nick Stone. Next we have Holding Up the Universe by Jennifer Nevin. This follows two main characters. We have Libby who is um where is it? Yeah, she's she's morbidly obese. And then you have Jack who can't recognize anyone's faces. He has this, um, I guess he has like a brain injury where he stopped being able to recognize people's faces. So he looks away and looks back like he can't recognize them. He can't process that coding in his brain. Um, and nobody knows that. And it's their relationship getting to know each other after some messed up stuff happens in their high school. Um, and just how do they... How they become friends and maybe more. I really enjoyed it. I think that the topic of Libby's obesity is done well. I think that it's not at all offensive but then again I'm not morally obese so I it's kind of hard to say that with any certainty because I'm not part of that community but I thought it was very very good and did a really good job and Libby is an amazing character. She's a kick-ass character. I really enjoyed her. Jack needs to be punched in his face sometimes but that's just how that goes. Can't remember if I said but I gave this a four and a half stars. Next up we have The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is a young adult contemporary book that is written completely in verse which is really cool. It follows our main character Siomar. She's an Afro-Latinx young woman who I forget where they live I have no idea where they live but whatever um and she's just coming to she lives with a very um religious mother religious like catholic mother um it's just her coming to terms with herself and her sexuality and her identity and how that relationship with her mother kind of changes and evolves or devolves throughout the course of the book and how she finds her voice through spoken word and I really 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 enjoyed this book and I ended up also giving this a four and a half. Next we have Intercepted by Alexa Martin. This is a sports romance. You follow the main character Marley Harper who has been dating this football dude for like 10 years and she finds out he's cheating and so that's the end of that relationship but then someone from her past pops up and it, you know it's a romance. You know how this ends. Alexa Martin has another book coming out called Fumbled and I believe it comes out sometime in April and I definitely will be picking that up because I really enjoyed Intercepted and I end up giving Intercepted a four stars. Next we have the new queen of hard-hitting contemporary Angie Thomas of course. Her newest book On the Come Up which came out earlier in February, February 5th I believe it was. This is set in the same world as The Hate You Give. It's set in Garden Heights but it does it's not a sequel if you will so you can read this one without reading the hate you give if you want like why would you do that just read them both and this follows Brie she is a young black woman who is just trying to make it as a rapper that's her main goal in life that's what she loves to do and it's her dealing with overcoming stereotypes overcoming misogyny in the rap industry and coming to own and coming to her own terms and doing things on her own terms and deciding who is she going to be as a rapper. I really thoroughly enjoyed this. I gave it a four and a half stars and I highly recommend it. Funny enough, most of my four and a half stars came at the beginning of the month. Um, but yeah, next we have Foolish Hearts by Emma Mills. This follows our main character, Claudia, and she witnesses like the disillu disillusion. Basically, she witnesses the end of the most iconic couple in her school, and one half of that couple, Iris, like, hates her after that. But they are put together on this play, and it is Claudia and her group of friends just going through the ringer and just dealing with different things, and there's a little bit of a romance in here. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Emma Mills is just, like, a really talented writer. She writes really grasping dynamic complex main characters but also side characters so there's never going to be a side character in here that you're not completely invested in which I really appreciated and I ended up giving this a four and a half stars. Next we have Letters to the Lost by Bridget 
Chimera. Again, why? Why am I like this? Um, and this is a really dark, brooding contemporary about these two characters, Juliet and Declan, I believe his name is. Juliet and Declan, and they start corresponding via letters. So Juliet's mother has just died. Um, this like starts in September. The mother has died that past May. And to cope with this grief that she's now having, she writes letters to her mother, leaves them on the grave. Instead of leaving flowers, she leaves letters. Declan works at the cemetery, sees one of the letters, and decides to respond and leave it. And Juliet sees this response, and they kind of go back and forth. And it is essentially them confiding in each other with out knowing who the other one is in real life, even though they keep bumping into each other in real life. Really cute. I I like the premise. The main character, Declan, I for most of the book, I didn't like him. I found him overly aggressive, overly mean, and just I didn't see how the main girl character, Juliet, was going to reconcile this guy she's been talking with via letters and then eventually emails with this just like really mean dude she keeps bumping into and so i ended up giving this a four stars it probably would have been like a four and a half if i could stand the main dude next up we have miss miss fit city i read volume one earlier in the month and then i went back and i bought volume two later on the month and miss fit city is a two-part comic book collection that follows this group of four friends. They live in this really drab, dreary town that's known for like this one hit movie it had. They find a treasure map and it kind of takes off from there. And throughout the two volumes, you're seeing them journey and try to find this treasure using this map of this like pirate lady who was like part of their town. So it's really cool. I really liked it. I really liked the, let me use the first one. I really liked the artwork. And I'm kind of really sad that it's only two parts. I w It's kind of open-ended, so if they wanted to continue on with maybe like another adventure, they could. I hope they do. I don't know, but I really enjoyed it more than I thought I would. And this was actually one of my TBR jar picks for the month of February. It's the only one that I read. But, uh... Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Next up, we have the only manga that I read, and that is Yona of the Dawn, Volume 1. This follows this princess who is set to inherit this kingdom, and then something tragic happens, and that is essentially the first volume, is that tragedy happening and her dealing with it, and the rest of the series, I'm presuming, is her going through that. So I have Volumes 2 and 3 now. I can plan on continuing on with it. If I like Volumes 2 and 3, then I'll start to get more and keep going. And I gave this one a four stars. Next we have This One Summer by Jillian Tamaki and Mariko Tamaki, right? Yeah, Mariko Tamaki. This is a contemporary graphic novel about this girl, look at that artwork, about this girl named Rose. Rose and her parents go to this beach place, Awago Beach, um, and every summer they do like a set certain of activities, but this summer is different. Her parents are fighting, there's some tension, her mom's not acting like herself, and she's just growing up and discovering new things, and she has this best friend, and it chronicles their summer on this beach as they both change, and the dynamics of Rose's family change, and yeah, it was really enjoyable. The main character, Rose, is kind of annoying a lot of the time, but... She's young, so there's that, and I gave this a four stars. Next, we have another comic book collection, or comic volume, rather. This is Wakanda Forever. This follows three members of the Dora Milaje as they just essentially do different missions and different quests, getting to know them, how they work. As you can see, Spider-Man is featured, um, and I really, really enjoyed it. I am looking forward to reading more about the Dora Milaje as they become more prevalent in the MCU, and I gave this a four. Next up, we have Paper Girls Volumes they're backwards. Volumes 1, Volumes 2, and of course Volume 3. Paper Girls is set in the 80s. It's about these paper delivery girls. There's four of them, these four friends who are paper delivery girls, and there's time travel and aliens and monsters, 
and just like really cool interesting adventures and I really enjoyed it. I started reading this series I believe um, last year and I got part way through volume 3 and I just stopped for some reason and I was like you know I want to start again and so I started from the beginning just to refresh my memory and I like zoomed through these three in a couple of sittings and I really enjoyed it. The artwork is phenomenal, the characters are great and they're just a couple of really like badass female characters who have no idea what's happening but they're just taking it in stride anyway. And I gave all three of these volumes four stars. Next up we have Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare. This is the second book in the Dark Artifices series. The Dark Artifices series is part of Cassandra Clare's Shadowhunter world. This series follows the Blackthorn family as well as Emma Carstairs and a few other major players um, in the Shadowhunter universe. And essentially Lady Midnight is the first book. In Lady Midnight, there have been these murders of fairies and humans, and because of the cold piece, which was set up at the end of the Mortal Instrument series, they can no longer engage with fairies or help fairies, but this group of fairies come to the Blackthorns and Emma asking for help to find this murder and put them to justice, and that is essentially what Lady Midnight is about, and Lord of Shadows follows the events of Lady Midnight. I really enjoyed this. It was gut-wrenching. It was so enthralling though, but like, I'm excited to head into Queen of Air and Darkness, which is the third one, but I'm also like frightened to see what happens in the conclusion. And Lord of Shadows, I gave it four stars. Next up, we have Witch Part 1, The Twelve Portals, Volume 1. And this is... Okay, let me just tell you my history with Witch. I started watching the American TV show when I was younger. It only had two seasons in America. It's originally based off of this Italian animated series which is based off the Italian graphic novels and now Disney is doing us the great pleasure, thank you Disney, of republishing this series in English. So the graphic novels. Um, I know at least volumes one, the first three are out. I believe they're four and five are out but don't quote me on that. Um, and so this is that you know I love that show it's one of my favorite childhood shows so this is just full of nostalgia it's full of a lot of different things in the tv show so it follows the same storyline so but there's a lot of different aspects that weren't included in the tv show which I'm also like very much appreciating because there's still some surprises um I gave this a three and a half not a bad rating it could have been better I guess but I feel like everything could be better I'm looking forward to continuing though and yeah, it's just like, look at that. It's just so... I love this so much. I love this so much. I think I gave it a three and a half because there are some parts where it dragged and it didn't need to. So I'm hoping as it continues, because this is a volume one, I'm hoping as it continues it picks up speed. Um, and I have no doubt that it will because sometimes the TV show got real crazy. Next up we have The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I'm ashamed it took me so long to read this um, because I loved it. I loved it. It's one of the only books during this month that I gave a five stars. It is hilarious. So it's a hate to love romance. You follow Lucy and Joshua. They are the assistants of these co-CEOs at a publishing company and they despise each other. And so this book is them essentially not despising each other anymore. And when I tell you I laughed out loud at least once on every single page. I was constantly laughing. It's so funny. Like it's ridiculous how funny it is and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. So if you want something that's hilarious and a romance and a hate to love romance, I highly, highly recommend this. Next up we have something that I really should have started the moment that I bought it and that is Scooby Apocalypse Volume 1. This is an adult sci-fi apocalyptic scooby-doo murder mystery it's beautiful this is another one of my favorite shows that i'm getting in another medium it's beautiful it's amazing the characters are great my only criticism is that sometimes the dynamic between daphne and velma gets a little repetitive i hope that's fixed and the consecutive volumes because it's right now volume four is out volumes five is coming out in like may or something so i hope that's fixed i'm going to continue and read it but this was beautiful this was amazing and i loved it and i couldn't stop reading this i think i read this i read most of it in one sitting and just look at that artwork oh, this is just so good 
Uh, and I gave this five stars. This and The Hating Game were the only five stars books that I had, um, but I loved this. Next we have Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. This is the first book in the Grishaverse, and this follows Alina, and she is a peasant and a soldier. Um, and there are these people called Grisha who have these different certain abilities. So you have the... Is it going to give me the breakdown in the beginning? No. Yes. No. Yes. So you have the corporal, corp, Corporalki, the Order of the Living and the Dead. Um, you have the Etherealki and the Materialki. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, and so... She lives in this universe where there are some people who have these magical powers or these special abilities. She finds out that she has this ability that she didn't know about and the king's right hand man, the Darkling, takes her and starts to train her, telling her that she is going to help the future of the kingdom and this is that journey and I really enjoyed it. My only critique was I felt that the romance in here was a bit rushed and I felt that the last 100 pages were a bit rushed as well. So much happens in that last 100 pages and I feel like it could have, there's a lot in the middle that didn't really need to be as long. So it didn't need to be this long of a book in my opinion. And I gave it a solid four stars. Next we have Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. This was heart wrenching, wow. This was, this was like, <sighs> this was a lot. Um, this follows, is her name also Claudia? Yes, it is. This follows a girl named Claudia. It is her, I believe she's in, yeah, she's in the eighth grade. And she has this best friend named Monday. And Monday goes missing and nobody seems to care. And so this is all about Claudia trying to find her best friend. There's a huge plot twist in this that comes out of nowhere. I think that it was perfectly, I think that it was perfectly and absolutely executed and wow, like it, I can't say much without giving this away. It was just heart wrenching. It's a lot. It's a little bit heavy at some points and I would definitely recommend it. And I gave this a four stars as well. Next we have Skyward by Brandon Sander. What, what, what's his name? Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This is a first and a new Brandon Sanderson series. Um, this is actually the UK edition. I didn't, I didn't really like the US edition, so I bought this from Book Depository. <laughs> um, so yeah. And this follows Spencer, and Spencer is the daughter of this coward pilot, and her entire life is kind of plagued by that title that her father now, her dead father now has. But she wants to be a pilot no matter what, and it is her journey trying to become a pilot, trying to prove her worth as something more than a coward's daughter, but while also, I don't want to say avenging her father, but she doesn't believe that he's a coward. And this was so engrossing. It's fast paced. It's great. The characters are amazing. There's no active romance in here, which is fine. Like I'm not requiring that of my fantasy books, but there's like hints of a little bit of fantasy, a little, little sprinkle of fantasy. So if we get a fantasy in the second book, that'd be nice, you know? I see the makings of one, I see the possibility of one, but I really enjoyed this and I gave this a four stars. Next up we have Scythe by Neil Shusterman. I'm ashamed that it took me this long to read this book because this book was absolutely amazing. It was absolutely amazing. It follows this world where humanity has advanced to the point where we have conquered death. No one dies. But in order to contain the population you have this order of the Scythes and they are licensed to kill and so they go around and they have, they have a quota that they have to fill but can't go above and they kill people by like supposedly by random and you have these two characters Citra and Rowan who are chosen to be the Scythe's apprentice and train in the way of the Scythe to become Scythe and it is there's a lot of politics there's a lot of intrigue there's a lot of questions on morality and how we are as a society and where are we headed and how will we answer certain questions that are bound to come up if we get to a place where we have conquered disease and old age and poverty and homelessness and hunger. And I gave this a four and a half stars. I'm very excited to get Thunderhead and continue on with the series. Last two books. So after I had such a huge success with The Heating Game, I went and picked up 99% Mine by Sally Thorne. Also really interesting, also really funny. Not as funny as The Heating Game. That's okay though, still funny. My main critique with this one, 
The character is hilarious, by the way. I, I think I love this main girl character more than the girl character of The Hating Game, but only by, like, this much. Um, my main thing with this was the ending felt very rushed. Very rushed. Um, this is a love story between these two people who are childhood friends and the main girl Darcy she is coming back to town to like kind of oversee the renovation of her grandmother's house and Tom the dude is now in renovations that's what he does and so them just being in the same space and all of this like interesting sexual tension but my main thing is that I felt that the the ending was rushed and I didn't really appreciate that there's so much that happens in the last like 50 pages and you're just like what it could have either been shorter if you took out some stuff in the middle or longer if you just expanded on the end. And I gave this a four stars. Last book I read in the month of February is kind of a modern class classic that is a reread for me because I read it in middle school and that is The Giver by Lois Lowry. This is a dystopian society where everything has sameness. You can't tell skin color, you can't tell hair type, there's no color, there's no emotions. It's very like plain and so in this society everyone is given a particular job and at the ceremony where Jonas is supposed, Jonas is the main character, Jonas is supposed to receive his assignment, he is thrown a curveball and it's all about him dealing with this curveball and trying to essentially save this society from themselves. I really enjoy this. I think the pacing is done really well. I think the expansion of the world is done really well. This is the first on a quartet. I actually just received the second book in the quartet today so I'm hoping to continue on and actually really enjoy this series and if I do then I'll get the other two books and finish out the series and it'll be really good. Um, it brings up a lot of questions about society and how we deal with pain, how we deal with memory, the importance of memories, um, and the importance of knowledge and knowing and what happens when you take that away from a society. And I gave this a four stars. So I forgot to mention that I actually got this copy of the Come Up from Book of the Month. I'm not sponsored by them, I'm not affiliated by them, but I do have a referral code. So if you go down in the description box, you press a referral, referral code, and you sign up using that link, you get a free book, and I get a free book. Everyone's happy. Everyone's happy. So yeah, if you want to do that, you can. That'd be amazing. That referral link will always be there under every video. So even if I don't mention it in a video, it's down in the description box. But moving on to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. That That's all the books I read in February. Um, it's March something. It's March 4th. March is starting off to be a very good month. But please go follow me on all my social media. That's including Twitter, Instagram. Follow me on Goodreads. You can see what I'm currently reading. You can see what I've read in the past. And you can see more extensive written reviews of the books that I have finished and it's a good time. Leave a comment down below. What did you finish in February that surprised you? What was a five-star read for you? And what are you looking forward to reading in March? And I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.